Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will share some tips and tricks from my journey with the dynamic tiling window manager Hyperlint. You will learn how to divide the hyperlint.conf into logical modules, how to set up the monitor resolution and the frequency, how to use the hyperctl command, how to create a key binding to toggle between the tiling window mode and the floating mode, how to pass through the super key to a virtual machine and how to prepare your hyperlint system for screen sharing and recording. As a foundation for this video, I will use the version 2.5.1 of my .5s. You can find all files and configurations ready to download on my GitLab repository or just study and read the content of the files. The link is in the description below. And if you like that video, please subscribe to my channel. Let's jump in. The first tip is about the Hyperlint configuration. The Hyperlint conf includes all configurations of your Hyperlint setup. And depending on your customization, it can be a very long file can become very confusing. And there is a way to structure the file a bit better and divide the configurations into dedicated files. Let me show you how I have done this in my dot files. I cd into dot files. I cd into hyper. And here is the hyperlint conf and the hyperlint conf looks like that. You see the file only includes source commands to separate files. And with that, I can give the Hyperlin conf a structure. When I close it again, I open the folder conf. And here you see all parts of my Hyperlin configurations. For example, the auto start file. And here are all applications defined that should be started together with Hyperland. Let me show you another example. The key bindings file. Here you have in one file all of my key bindings. And that makes it super easy to keep the overview about the configuration. And you will find this section that you want to adapt to your needs very easy. And with that, you can create variations of a configuration. For example, I have created two variations of my animations definitions for Hyperlint. So let's cd into animations. And you see here two animation variations. An animation that costs low performance. This, this is normally my default animation setup. And an animation with high performance, with a bit more fancy effects. When I cd one level up and open the animation.conf file, you see that I'm currently loading the animations low. And when I change here to high and save the file, and now the variation with a bit more animation effects is activated. Yeah, so now you see here that swipe to the right and then back to the left and here also a swipe to the bottom and a bit to the top. So a bit more advanced animations are activated here. And I can easily switch back again to the lower version just by writing here low. And now the default animation is back. Another important configuration is of course the monitor setup. Also here I have a dedicated file in the conf folder with the name monitor conf. And here you see that you can also here add directly several variations into that file. I have, for example, activated at the moment the screen resolution 1920 to 1080 um, without scaling. This is the one here at the end. But I can also easily switch to the preferred setup or I can switch to my work environment setup with 2560 to 1440 at 120 hertz. More information about how to set up a monitor or a multi-monitor setup is available in the Hyperlint Wiki in the monitor section. Yeah, so here also the syntax of the monitor 
keyword is defined here. And here is an example how to set up a multi monitor configuration. So it's very well documented on the Hyperland wiki. This tip is about using HyperCTL. HyperCTL is a built-in utility to control some parts of the compositor from the CLI. Means with HyperCTL, you can, for example, write scripts to modify the current Hyperland configuration on the fly, or you can just enter the command here in a terminal. Let me give you an example. When I scroll down, you will find here this command, hyperctl keyword general border size 10. The border size is at the moment set to three, but when I run this command, then I have the border size 10 on the fly with one command. I can switch back to the border size three just by replacing the 10 back to three and I have back the border size three. Another configuration change that you can, for example, do is to change the radius of the rounded corners. Yeah, at the moment I have set up a radius of 10 for my windows, but I can also disable the rounding corners with that command hyperctl keyword decoration rounding to zero. And now the rounding corners are disabled. I can switch back to 10 and I have 10. I can switch to 20 and I have 20 and so on and so on. Again, an example how you can modify the Hyperland configuration in real time with HyperCTL. And in the Hyperland wiki, you find this page using HyperCTL and it's very well explained. Here's, for example, also a command to reload the configuration or the kill mode where you can click on an application and then the application will be stopped. Another great example how you can use HyperCTL is to implement a toggle for the floating mode. You see at the moment the windows are in the tiling mode. So when I press the super key with the left mouse button, I can change the position. Yeah, But I have defined here a key binding, super key shift T. Let's do that, super key shift T. And now when I move the window around, you see now they are in the floating mode. Let's decrease the window size a bit. Yeah, so it's working. And it's a toggle. So when I switch again, super key, shift T, the windows are back in tiling mode. And this can be done with this command, hyperctl dispatch workspace opt all float. And I run the script every time with super key shift T. With super key T, I can bring a single window into the floating mode and bring it back with super key T. This tip is for virtual machine users who are running window managers in a virtual machine. In that case, the super key is very important. But when you run by default, a window manager in a virtual machine on Hyperland. So if you, for example, want to open a terminal with super key return, you see what happens. The terminal will not be opened in the virtual machine. It's opened on the host. And when I close it with super key Q, again, it's reacting on the host. Or when I switch to the first workspace with super key one, you see that only the host is reacting and not the guest. But you can change this by passing through the super key into the virtual machine with a key binding. In my dot files, I have defined the super key P to pass the super key to the virtual machine. And now see what happens when I now click on super key return. Now the virtual machine reacts and I can switch to the second workspace. I can switch back to the first workspace and you see the virtual machine is now reacting fine. And when I want to give the host back the super key, I click super escape. And when I now press super key return, the terminal opens again on the host. Let me show you that key binding. It's also documented in the Hyperlet wiki. It's the main mod. This is super key P submap pass through 
and submap equals path through. And with that, you can pass through the super key to the virtual machine. And you can escape, means stop that path through with super, the escape key, submap reset, submap equals reset. This tip is about the Hyperlint desktop portal. An XTG desktop portal is a program that lets other applications communicate with the compositor through the debus. And this is required if you want to share your screen, for example, in video conferences via Microsoft Teams or others, or if you want to record your screen, for example, in OBS Studio. And for Hyperland, you have to install this package, XTG Desktop Portal Hyperland. Yeah, here is described how you can install it. And you have to start this portal with Hyperland in the auto start. I have here an exec once command for an xdg.sh script. With that script, I make sure in the first step that all possible running xdg portals are stopped, are killed. And then I have a proper initiation of the xdg desktop portal hyperland plus the general xdg desktop portal. And then the screen sharing should work. Let me switch for a second to OBS Studio, and then you can also record your screen by selecting here as a source screen capture pipe wire. I hope you found something that you can use on your own configuration of Hyperland. And the Hyperland journey is not over for me and more videos with more tips and tricks will come in the future. And with that, see you next time.